Okay, I think I dialed in the flat out suspension the way that I need it. I actually softened it the whole way. I'm one click hard. <laughs> so I took it all the way down to soft, moved it one click towards the hard, and that's where I'm sitting at. <coughs> I'm also going to be giving you measurements of where the subframe sits, the gaps in the uh, in the rings on the suspension, and what what all my measurements are. So take a walk around with me with the suspension, and I'll show you exactly where clearances are and all of those measurements. So first and foremost. We are going to measure the subframe right here. We're gonna see where that is measured at. So I went to the alignment shop and they said that my axles were probably binding, which is why um, I had some shuttering and everything else. So I went and I went and fixed that, lowered it just a little bit, and now my measurements, oh if I can get the state measure. My measurements are this. So I'm about 13 and a half to the lowest point on the subframe here. Give or take a quarter inch. Which really comes down to about, if I do my math right, about five and a half inches about five and a half inches of lift. This thing comes stock at like 8.2 and between the tires, uh, 285, 70, 17, between the tires and the HRG uh, three inch, I have the HRG ultimate three inch. <laughs> wow, I have the HRG three inch ultimate lift kit with the subframe kit. And then I also have a uh, the flat out suspension all that combined i have about five inches of lift five almost five and a half inches of lift on a ridge line i'm pretty stoked about that and they're performing great i don't have any shuttering um and the axles aren't binding when i'm at a turn and i hit a hit a bump they were but I had it up an inch. So I dropped it and we're good to go. Have you ever seen a ridge line with almost six inches of lift? Yeah, I don't think so until Renegade. We're blazing trails here. Here at the, um, in the body, this is where we're at with our measurements. Dead center, right at the door. Right, touching the ground here. We're at, oh, right about 19. Oh. There we go, like 19 and a quarter. There we go. Tape's not bending. We're at about 19 and a quarter right there for the center right in the door. It's pretty good body clearance there. Okay, now with the driver's side suspension. What exactly am I measuring at? Okay. So where I have these gapped at, so I just got, I just got done testing these. So this is why that's dirty, but I have two and a quarter inches between the threads here or between the rings. This chunk of threads right here is right about two and a half. This gap is about two, right, almost right at two and a quarter. And then I do have a little bit out, which is about uh, five eighths of an inch. about five eighths of an inch out. Hopefully that helps you kind of set up your, the front of your suspension. Now that's with the HRG spacer on there. So the spacer itself is, okay, so two and a 
two and three quarters, you could say. Do have a one inch subframe drop from HRG on there as well. So if you don't have the HRG, your, your measurements are gonna be different. Um, you can gap, you can put the thread, the gap between the, in my case, the red collars, um, the gap between those can be much larger, uh, you know, about two and three quarter inch larger, um, which give you a lot more preload, things like that. For my setup, for the height, I, all I'm waiting for is some axles that are, that can travel, you know, have, have more pivot um, or more steep of an angle or whatever. And I want to take this up probably another inch. Uh, not, not crazy, but about another inch I think would be good. Then I'd be able to um, have the clearance that I want for what I want to do, as well as it would clear the tires perfectly um, and no other modifications would need to be done at all. So moving on to the back. So measuring right here in the back is what I'll be checking out. It's almost right at almost 15 and a quarter right there. Right there, it's 15 and a quarter. I would like these to be able to go higher, but this lower control arm here isn't long enough to be able to take it up higher. There is about a one and three, uh, about two inch, two inch spacer in the back here from HRG. You have to, if you're gonna have this as well as this uh, flat out suspension, you're gonna need adjustable tie rod ends. You will need those. So have it, have that at right at three inches. Again, remember I got a one inch subframe drop to help the axles not be as um, sharp as sharp of an angle, which does allow the body to be a little bit higher than otherwise by an inch. So this is the look of Renegade right here with those measurements. Hopefully that helps you set up your flat out suspension when you get it for your Honda Ridgeline. Uh, if you have a different setup, obviously your measurements will be a little different, but at least that should give you a starting point. Hopefully this was helpful. Like, share, subscribe. Let's get some Honda Ridgelines out there that are showing up some Tacomas. How about that? That would be pretty legit. Or maybe even some Jeeps. Who knows? Who knows what these things are capable of if they have the support that Tacomas and Jeeps have. Like, share, subscribe. Appreciate the support, guys. We'll talk to y'all later on the next one.